in this group of videos, we are going to talk about transfer pricing. And transfer pricing is actually pretty complicated. And to explain it, I think the easiest way to wrap your head around it is with an example. So Heinz is probably the number one, I, as far as I know, it's the number one ketchup maker in the world. And like most big companies, and Heinz I would classify as a big company, they own a lot of other littler companies. So they own like Lee and Perrins that makes steak sauce, and they own Weight Watchers Sauce Division, and they own lots of little sauce companies. And in fact, Heinz is owned by Kraft, if you've heard of Kraft Foods, that the, the giant company that owns all sorts of uh, different types of foods. So, uh, but Heinz itself is a very big company. Um, one of the companies Heinz owns is, uh, oops, I scrolled the wrong thing, uh, is this Bagel Bite. So you can see there's the Heinz uh, logo right at the top. And um, okay, it's a little snack and you gotta assume what it is. It's a, like a little piece of bread, a bagel. They squirt some ketchup on there. They drop some cheese, maybe some pepperoni and you put it in your toaster oven or your, your microwave and you have a nice snack after school. Um, so Heinz owns Bagel Bites. And let's, let's kind of think about this corporate relationship. So at the very top we have Kraft Heinz which is the name of the parent company. Uh, and beneath them, let me change ink here. We've got Heinz, I should, well, Heinz Co. Oops, <laughs> I don't know, I made it a C, a K, a K there, Heinz Co. So sort of corporate Heinz. Uh, underneath them, we have Heinz Ketchup. And we also have uh, bagel bites. Okay, so first of all, generally when we have transfer pricing issues, we have this type of a web of companies going on, right? If you're just one company, you really don't have these transfer pricing issues, or it's, you might from division to division, but it's it's easier to see in these big companies that uh, have this web of, of subsidiaries. Um, something I, I should address here, I'm not going to touch on much in this video, but a big issue around transfer pricing is taxation. So a big company like Kraft Heinz, probably when they're thinking about transfer pricing, they're not going to think of the dilemma in the same way we're going to discuss here. What they're going to say to themselves is, okay, uh, what jurisdiction is Bagel Bites taxed in? And let's say they're taxed in the United States. And what jurisdiction is Heinz Ketchup taxed in? And let's say they're taxed in Ireland, for example. Well, they're going to try to make whatever relationship minimizes their tax bill, they're going to show the profit there. So they'll, they'll set up their transfer pricing in such a way that they're more profitable in one region or another. We're not going to think of that as we just look at the theory behind transfer pricing, but it is something to keep in mind. Big companies that cross international borders will set up their transfer pricing arrangements in a way that minimizes taxes. Um, which I'm not a huge fan of on a personal level, but we'll leave my personal politics aside for the time being. It's reality and that's what companies do. So um, let's look at this ketchup situation. So again, Heinz Ketchup uh, owns Bagel Bites and not only do they own Bagel Bites, but their ketchup goes into Bagel Bites. So Heinz has a decision to make. How much should they charge Bagel Bites for their ketchup? That's the transfer pricing decision. Um, let's say, uh, you know, they could charge them what they charge outside customers. That's an option, right? Let's think of the options. What could Heinz possibly charge Bagel Bites? They could charge them what they charge outside customers. So how much do they charge outside customers? I'm making numbers up here. Let's say they charge outside customers two dollars per liter of ketchup and uh, uh, for my American uh, cousins uh, that's about 20 ounces a liter of ketchup is about 20 ounces hey, you guys probably know what a liter is what am I going through that for so it's two bucks a liter uh, is what they charge outside customers 
So what we've done here in, in getting that market price is we've established a ceiling. We would never charge our internal sub more than the market price because of course if you were the head of bagel bites you wouldn't want to buy heinz ketchup if you know internally if you could just go to the supermarket and buy it for two dollars a liter or go to a wholesaler and buy it for two dollars a liter you'd go to the wholesaler so we're gonna charge them at most two bucks a liter and that seems reasonable to me now i would think about the least we would ever want to charge is like our variable cost. So it's not even covering our cost, but covering our, our cost to produce a few extra liters for them. And let's, again, I'm making up numbers here. Let's assume the variable cost is 10 cents per liter. So if I'm Heinz, I'm probably not going to sell below my variable cost. Again, I'm taking a loss overall because it's not covering my fixed costs at all. But, you know, it's uh, the least I think I would want to sell for is variable cost. Let's assume that the variable cost plus the fixed expenses, we'll call that the full cost when we cost it out is 25 cents a liter. And again, these are just made up numbers by me. I certainly don't have any insight into Heinz. I'm just throwing numbers around here so we can have a conversation. Um, okay, so those are three pretty key numbers, right? 10 cents a liter for the variable cost, 25 cents a liter for the full cost, and two bucks a liter if we just charge you know, the market price. What I'd like to do is I'd actually like to analyze each of those options. So again, option one is the market price, option two, variable cost, <laughs> sorry, my writing is so bad, and option three, full cost. So those are three options. I'm actually gonna pitch you a fourth option in a minute, but let's look at those three options. So again, we're the parent company Kraft Heinz, and we're thinking how much should Heinz Ketchup be charging bagel bites? Keeping in mind, if they charge two bucks, right? Heinz ketchup profit goes up, Bagel Bites profit goes down as if they charge two bucks. Kraft Heinz profit isn't affected. It's like one subsidiary shows more profit, one subsidiary shows less. Overall, the company's in the same place. Or alternatively, if they charge 10 cents, well, Heinz ketchup profit goes down, Bagel Bites profit goes up because their costs are lower and they make more profit on this stuff. But Kraft Heinz, they're in the same place overall again. If you're the manager at Heinz Ketchup, you want to charge as much as possible. If you're the manager of Bagel Bites, you want to pay as little as possible. That's the tension here. That's the challenge here. So let's look at each of these uh, options. Market price, variable cost, full cost, and again, I'll present you with a fourth option uh, as we go. So let's start with number one. Whoa, what happened there? Let's start with option one, market price. I'd like to give you a few advantages and disadvantages. So the biggest advantage of the market price, the, the most obvious advantage is it is objective, right? It's not like we're fudging this number. Here's what we charge our normal customers and we're gonna treat you like a normal customer. You pay two bucks like everybody else does. Lots of people put Heinz ketchup in their sauces, in their mixes, you know, lots of people that Heinz doesn't own use Heinz ketchup. We're gonna charge you what we charge them. It's fair, right? It's a fair number. Uh, you know, it's, it's harder to manipulate in that way. Um, now, this is a key concept, and, and you'll hear me talk about this a few times. It's the concept of opportunity cost. I'll just put that on the side, a little asterisk there. So where does opportunity cost come into play here? Basically, companies are said to make good decisions when the opportunity cost is what's being charged, when the transfer price is the opportunity cost. So the market price can be the opportunity cost. And what do I mean by that? Let's say Heinz ketchup is sold out everywhere. It's selling out of ketchup everywhere. They have more demand than they have supply. They have lots of customers lined up willing to pay $2 a liter. And then Bagel Bites comes along and they say, we'd like to pay 10 cents. 
And you're Heinz and you're like, I'm selling out at $2. I'm not going to give it to you for 10 cents. And in fact, if Heinz says that, they're doing the, the theoretically correct thing. This is the best thing for Kraft Heinz, the parent company. If, if there's unlimited demand and they're selling out at $2, the parent company, Kraft Heinz, should say, no, $2 is going to be the transfer price because we'll just, you know, it's it's the correct price. It represents the opportunity cost. If by selling to you, they're giving up a $2 sale to an outsider, they should sell to you for $2. So uh, charging market price, if demand, uh, let's, I'll put it this way. If there's no excess capacity in other words if i got i can't make any new ones for you i'm selling out uh, with what i've got and i got no extras for you uh this leads to the correct decisions basically it means the company will behave and make intelligent decisions they won't make wrong decisions based on charging market price okay Disadvantages, well, there may be no market price. Hard to think of for Heinz because there's such a market for it, but you can imagine products where you have two divisions and one division doesn't really sell to an outside market. It only sells to its internal company. Well, that transfer price, it's hard to determine because there's no market price. Maybe this Heinz example, you know, they sell it to us in these squeeze bottles. Maybe they're going to sell it to the... Um, uh, bagel bites they're going to just give them bags of tomato sauce you know it'll be a little bit of a different product so there might be not be a market for an unlabeled version of this product i'm not sure uh the other thing is it doesn't capture the relationship look at this we scroll up here we see the word heinz on the box of bagel bites so Clearly, Heinz bought Bagel Bites for a reason. They bought Bagel Bites so they could promote the Heinz brand. They could put it in other products. If I charge them full price, it doesn't capture the value that I'm getting out of having the logo Heinz on the box and owning this sub company. So that is a disadvantage of charging the market price. Option two, variable cost. Let's do it. So what are the advantages of uh, the variable cost? Well, the biggest one comes back to this opportunity cost issue. I said, if we have no excess capacity, uh, it's right to charge the market price. Well, if we have excess, oh, good Lord, my writing, capacity, this leads to correct decisions. In other words, if I have a bunch of extra capacity, the cost to Heinz uh, ketchup, to make extra ketchup, is 10 cents a bottle. That's what I should be charging. It's going to mean that Bagel Bites makes the right decisions. It's not going to cost Heinz ketchup any profit. It's just it's a little extra work, but it, you know their costs are covered. Their fixed costs are fixed. So those shouldn't be included because they're going to pay those fixed costs no matter what. The variable cost is their cost to make an extra couple of liters of, or a liter of uh, ketchup, that's what they should be charging. And the company will be better off as a whole if that's what they charge. Um, uh, this also obviously is better for the buying decision, buying division, And it makes them order appropriately, right? This this puts the buying division in a better position without disadvantaging or without harming the selling division. Uh, the disadvantage, well, the seller doesn't recover fixed costs, right? The seller doesn't cover its fixed expenses, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, and that's really uh, the big one. Oh, and, and another one is the seller has incentive to fudge, I shouldn't use the word fudge, misclassify costs as variable, right? 
If I'm Heinz uh, ketchup and I see my true variable cost is 10 cents, I have every incentive to say, oh, my variable cost is actually 20 cents, right? And sort of slide some fixed costs into there because I want my income statement to look better because I'm, as if I'm Heinz ketchup manager, if I'm the manager of this division, I'm not judged on the profit of Kraft Heinz. I'm judged on the profit of my little division. So I'd rather my little division do a little bit better, uh, even if it's at the expense of bagel bites. Screw bagel bites, right? If you're in charge of that division, you would not care about bagel bites. When I set out to make this video, I didn't think I'd say the phrase screw bagel bites, but here we are. Um, okay, let's look at the third option here, and that's full cost. So full cost would mean charging the variable cost plus the fixed cost, right? The full cost. Um, so obviously less worry about this misclassification because all costs are included. Misclassifying costs is less of a problem. And it's pretty simple. You know, I just say, here's my costs. Uh, what are the disadvantages? Well, the seller loses incentives to be efficient. If they have, and this is the case if the buyer is really big. Obviously, for Heinz, they still want to be efficient because they want to make a profit. But let's say there's only one seller and one buyer in this relationship, right? It's the subsidiary selling to the parent company. In some time, instances, the seller just has no incentive to cut or reduce their cost because they have an automatic buyer who's going to cover their full cost. And so why would I want to cut a few pennies off my cost when the person's going to pay for it anyway? So it kind of reduces efficiencies to uh, cut costs. Okay, the fourth uh, option here. So we could charge $2. That's what outside customers pay. We could charge 10 cents. We could charge 25 cents based on full cost. Or we could charge some other amount. Can be above $2. Would not not likely. Could be below 10 cents. Not likely. Probably someplace in between based on Heinz Ketchup and Bagel Bites negotiating, right? They could just talk about it and negotiate. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? Like coming to a deal, just saying, look, you know, 50 cents, that's how much we'll, we'll take a hit and you take a hit. Um, and, and, you know, that sounds good on paper, but there are drawbacks to it. So uh, the obvious advantages, though, is... So negotiate, oops, negotiate. I think I spelled that right. So negotiate a price, likely someplace in the middle. Uh, so both divisions have incentives uh, to, you know, do the right thing, to act in their best interest right if i'm in charge of bagel bites i don't want somebody telling me the transfer price from on high i want to be able to negotiate and act in my own interest same with heinz they'd want to be able to drive the their best bargain um so yeah they they have proper incentives to behave in their own interests and that can often result in maximizing profit for them and maximizing profit for them and of course maximizing for them right ordering the right amounts and uh charging the right prices it could be uh the big disadvantage is it's a negotiation what do i mean by that well there can be winners and losers in a negotiation let's just say the Heinz ketchup manager is just an awesome negotiator. They might negotiate such a good deal that it's terrible for bagel bites. And remember, we're Heinz, we bought bagel bites. We want them to be successful. We don't want to have a winner and a loser in this negotiation. We want to have two winners, but let's just say one party out negotiates the other. That's bad. The other thing that could be bad is, well, uh, 
it takes a lot of time and effort to negotiate, right? It's a negotiation. So it can take time and effort and it can be costly just to negotiate when you could just simply say, no, we're charging the market price two bucks and move on with our life in 10 seconds. It could be weeks, months, years of negotiation that we just can't deal with. In an accounting class, generally speaking, these top two are considered the best options. And our, your rule of thumb will be this. If the company does not have, and the word you'll read is excess capacity. If the company does not have excess capacity, the market price creates the best decisions. The market price should be charged. If the company does have excess capacity, in other words, there's room to produce more, variable cost leads to the best decisions. We'll go through an example or two where uh, this will come into focus. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Transfer pricing is a trippy, tricky topic, but hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Okay, <sighs> that was long. I'm tired. If you've hung along this long, leave a comment. Let me know that you made it to the end. I'll be amazed. Goodbye, everybody.